Welcome back after the break. Uh, before we went for our break, we were looking at uh, chapter four, um, the nature of a God-given vision. And uh, we just saw the goal of, uh, I just mentioned to you, what is the goal of this chapter? The goal of the chapter is to understand, you know, how God uh, imparts his vision, how God takes us on a journey to see his vision fulfilled in our lives and the process that we carry out uh, the purposes of his uh, kingdom. Okay. So um, we'll continue with that and uh, we'll see that a God-given vision is a divine command and it's uh, the authorization comes from heaven, from God himself, who is the king uh, of uh, his kingdom. Okay, and we see that, uh, you know, God establishes uh, and uh, what he wants to be done in his kingdom here on earth, and he extends his kingdom uh, here on earth. So, you know, when God gives us a vision or he's uh, uh, revealing his plan and purposes, uh, through his vision to us, it's a command that needs to be uh, obeyed, okay? It's not just uh, the dream or vision that God is giving to us about what he wants us to do. It's not just a heavenly entertainment, but it's a command uh, which we have to obey. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, we also receive the authorization from heaven, uh, which means, you know, God gives us the authority, he gives us the grace, uh, he makes us bold, uh, fearless, and confident. Um, and, uh, you know, for every vision that God imparts uh, to us, we we can have this assurance that he's, you know, 100% committed to seeing uh, the vision fulfilled, like we saw in the Mary Miracle, the points in Mary Miracle, how, uh, you know, he saw, uh, he not only, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, planned that the, the, the Son of God would be conceived in Mary's womb, but he, you know, he, uh, what he envisioned, what he purposed, you know, he is committed to seeing the vision uh, fulfilled. So, uh, we don't have to be afraid when God uh, gives us something to carry to birth uh, because we know that the king of the kingdom is backing us up. Um, uh, he's 100% committed to seeing the vision fulfilled. He will do everything that is required, uh, but only God can do what is required and uh, he can help us see his vision fulfilled in and through us when he's backing us uh, is when, you know, when we are willing, when we are submitted, when we are yielded, uh, when we are, uh, you know, uh, obedient, trusting in him, uh, willing to carry that and run and not give up on the way. So, you know, um, when God gives us the vision, we need to understand that we become the vision bearer. Okay, we are the ones who are bearing the vision, carrying the vision, and God will work in and through us uh, to see the vision uh, fulfilled. But this does not mean that we are going to work in isolation. God will bring other people, like-minded people, who he also uh, will stir their hearts up towards what he's birthing in and through us, what he's wanting to do in and through us. Uh, several people will come uh, and, you know, they will uh, work alongside us to see this vision uh, fulfilled. Okay, so we uh, see that usually God raises a person uh, in a certain place who He gives uh, the message, who He births the message uh, in, or He uh, reveals His plan and purposes, and uh, then we see that He stirs up other people. Uh, he puts the burden on other people to who come alongside us uh, to fulfill God's plan and purpose in our. Uh, lives okay so we see that god raises a man uh he who he gives the mission to be fulfilled uh, who he proclaims a message to um and that man or that woman becomes the vision bearer or the vision holder and uh you know uh god also gives uh the person the methods the means how to carry out and how to fulfill uh the divine uh, purpose. For example, uh, we look at Moses's life. Uh, we'll not look at uh, the book of uh, uh, Exodus, uh, uh, 
uh, when we look at Acts chapter 7, verses uh, 17 uh, to 36, you know, uh, it says that, you know, when the time of the promise drew near, it was 17 of Acts 7, uh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose who did not know Joseph. And this man dealt treacherously uh, with the Israelites, uh, oppressed them. Um, and, uh, you know, we see that at that time, uh, Moses was born and how uh, Pharaoh ordered all the male uh, babies to be thrown in the river Nile. Uh, but we see how, you know, God protects uh, Moses, you know, uh, for three months uh, in, his, in his father's house. And then how he is uh, put in the basket in the river Nile and uh, Pharaoh's daughter takes him as his own son and how he's, uh, you know, trained and brought up in uh, the palace uh, learning of uh, all the wisdom of Egypt, uh, of the Egyptians, uh, you know, uh, learning warfare, learning to be the next um, um, a pharaoh of Egypt. And uh, we see that when he was 40 years old in Acts chapter 17, Acts chapter 7, verse 23, we read when, when Moses was 40 years old, uh, it came in his heart. That means God uh, stirred up his heart to visit his brethren and uh, we see that two of them, two of the Israelites are fighting with each other. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, the Israelite and Egyptian uh, were fighting with each other. The Egyptian was beating up uh, uh, the Israelite. And, uh, you know, Moses steps in and uh, uh, we see he's so angry with uh, the Egyptian that he struck, uh, strikes down the Egyptian and the Egyptian uh, dies. And uh, you know, in verse 25, it's very interesting uh, to read. It says, for he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand, but they did not understand. Okay, so he thought, uh, you know, by the age of 40, uh, Moses had come to uh, know what God had purposed for his life. He knew that uh, God had raised him up in the palace uh, to be the next Pharaoh to set his people free. Uh, he came to know he was not an Egyptian, but a Hebrew, uh, an Israelite, and God was going to use him to set, deliver his people free from uh, from slavery. And, uh, you know, we see that when he steps in to stop the fight between the Egyptian and the Israelite and how he kills the Egyptian, he just uh, envisioned or he just thought that, you know, um, that um, his... Uh, uh, his Israelite brothers would, uh, you know, understand that God has chosen uh, Moses to deliver him from uh, their hands. So we see that, uh, you know, the next day when uh, he sees two of the Israelites fighting, he steps in um, and then, uh, you know, one of them says, you know, um, who made you ruler and judge over us? Do you also want to kill us just like you killed that Egyptian? And so uh, Moses realized that, you know, what he thought he had uh, done and covered up the murder actually was known and he could not stay in Egypt anymore and he had to leave that place because uh, he knew that uh, Pharaoh was uh, all out to kill him because he had killed an Egyptian. And uh, so we see that he goes to the land of Midian and um, we see that after 40 years, you know, 40 years have passed by uh, that Pharaoh who's ruling uh, Egypt who knew uh, Moses died. So uh, the plans and purposes of God was, you know, on hold for 40 years. And uh, we see that God calling um, Moses at the burning bush and asking him to go um, uh, to deliver his people out of slavery. And uh, we also see that God uh, did many signs, miracles and wonders through uh, Moses um, uh, you know, uh, uh, when he went to deliver his uh, people. So here uh, we basically see that, you know, um, God is, uh, how God works uh, in Moses' life, you know, uh, just to a summary of how he, uh, you know, gives uh, Moses uh, the purpose for his life, a steering in his heart, how Moses recognizes it, but how he tries to do things in his own way and delays the process by 40 years, uh, but how God, uh, you know, again, uh, uses him uh, to birth his uh, 
vision, his plan to fulfill what God had planned and purpose uh, for his life. Okay, so that's just an example about Moses. Uh, we'll see more of uh, the examples from other people's lives. A God-given vision is often uh, detected by a simple stirring uh, in our hearts. Uh, so sometimes it's not through dreams, visions that we see, but it's just a simple stirring, you know, something that we see, something that we hear, uh, something that we uh, see in the news that stirs up our heart. Now, this stirring of our heart uh, that God uh, uses to birth his vision is not just an emotional stirring. Now, emotional stirring is, you know, when you hear about how uh, young girls are sold into prostitution or, uh, uh, you know, how young people are, um, uh, you know, uh, are into drugs and smoking and drinking and whiling away their lives and destroying their lives or, uh, you know, how they get into gangs and, uh, you know, they're uh, murdering people or not just uh, seeing how terrorists are killing people. You know, all of these, when we see things like this, uh, we can get emotionally stirred. You know, we can cry, we burdens our heart. Uh, we just pray, crying out to God, pray. But just as a, that's just an emotional steering, which will last for a day or two, and then, you know, it just uh, vanishes out of our minds, our hearts. Um, we don't think about it anymore. So that is an emotional steering. But a steering that God uh, steers in our hearts to, you know, to birth his vision is a steering that um, does not stay still, that does not go away from our hearts and minds. Uh, it's uh, it's something that, uh, you know, uh, would call for our attention, uh, would, you know, would uh, we would step in, do something about it, and we are not at peace, not at rest till uh, we do what God has called us to. Uh, do so we see that uh, in the life of Moses you know um, uh, uh, you know when he was 40 years old it came into his heart to visit his brethren the children of uh, Israel so you know 40 years prior to the burning bush experience God placed in Moses a stirring in his heart um, which was um, you know uh, less than spectacular than what he had seen in the burning bush uh, but it was you know God speaking to him uh, telling him what was his plan and purpose, is releasing, birthing his plan and purpose uh, in Moses' heart to deliver his uh, people. And God knew, or Moses knew that, uh, you know, he was uh, chosen by God to deliver his people out of uh, slavery. But, you know, he stepped in, he did things in his own flesh in his, uh, and that delayed things. But we see that 40 years after that, you know, before the burning bush encounter, uh, you know, uh, what came as a stirring in his heart initially, you know, uh, as a simple desire, simple knowing in his heart, uh, we see that uh, God is calling him again and, uh, you know, assigning him this, uh, to fulfill the same plan and uh, purpose in his heart. So what started off 40 years before was just a simple knowing in his heart, a simple stirring, a simple desire. Uh, but because of his what he did in his own flesh, delayed the uh, process by another 40 years. 40 years later, uh, you know, we see that uh, God calling him to the burning bush when God speaks to him, to his encounter, uh, he uh, calls him back to the purpose that he had uh, given to him uh, 40 years back, which is a simple steering in his heart. Okay, a uh, simple steering in a heart. Another example is Nehemiah. Uh, we know Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king, uh, the Persian king. And uh, one day, one of his brothers, uh, Hanani, came from uh, Judah. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Nehemiah is concerned about uh, uh, his people, how they're doing in uh, Jerusalem. And he hears that the, the walls of Jerusalem are broken down. Now, uh, what was Nehemiah's uh, response to that? You know, when he hears that the walls are broken down, the gates are burned with fire, uh, we see that he sat down and he wept. Okay, he wept, he moaned. Uh, it was not just for one or two days. It was, it was for many days. Uh, he wept and fasted and prayed, uh, you know, and, um, and it was God birthing, uh, something in him for him to do and we see that this initial stirring in his heart which led him to weep and moan and fast and pray led him to you know write uh, tell the king uh, you know uh, and the king gave him permission and we also see that when God uh, you know calls us when he gives us uh, uh, 
a, a, a mission. He gives us a, a, a message. You know, he also gives us uh, uh, the methods how to do it. So God would have put in his heart to write to the king, tell the king. And we see the king giving him not only a leave, but also giving him security, the soldiers to take, uh, you know, uh, uh, Nehemiah safely and also providing him with all the material that is required for building uh, the walls of uh, uh, Jerusalem. So just a simple steering in his heart when he heard that the walls of Jerusalem were broken down, led to such a great um, birthing of such a great mission, a purpose, which led to uh, building the walls of uh, Jerusalem, uh, which, uh, you know, Nehemiah carried out and he did it. And how do we know that it was just a, uh, a simple thing that God had put in his heart? We read this in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 12, when Nehemiah goes to Jerusalem uh, and he's uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, taking a tour of the situation of the walls and uh, uh, what needs to be done. He says, then I arose in the night. I and a few men with me. I told no one what God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. So Nehemiah goes to Jerusalem. He takes a few people in the night to go and to look at the walls of Jerusalem. He does it at night because there were a lot of enemies around, but he does not tell them what God had put in his heart. So what had God put in his heart? God had put in his heart to build the walls of um, Jerusalem. Okay. Uh, and we also see that, you know, the God-given vision uh, does not just, uh, you know, begin with a simple steering in our hearts. It also has an appointed time uh, when God wants to initiate it and when God wants to execute it. So I gave you an example in uh, the previous lecture, in our first lecture, where, you know, in Genesis chapter 2, where 3, where God says, you know, uh, he talks about the seed of the woman, the capital S. He's already, you know, for to his foreknowledge, he's already, uh, you know, revealing that the Messiah will come, that uh, uh, you know, God would come down as man. So, you know, it, but it took 4,000 years. So that 4,000 years uh, when God was preparing the scene for uh, God to become man is called as the chronos time. Okay, so the chronos time is the duration of time or the number of days uh, when God uh, speaks or births his vision and it takes that time to, you know, for the fulfillment. So, you know, God spoke in Genesis chapter 3 that the seed of the woman would come and would destroy uh, 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 the serpent seed. But it took 4,000 years uh, for the right moment when it was going to be executed. So when the time that, you know, the fullness of time came, which is called the Kairos time. So God works in the Kronos time and he works in the Kairos time. So the Kronos time is a time when, um, you know, it's a time when God uh, births the vision in us. It can be through a dream or vision, or a stirring in our heart, uh, or he just shows us something, you know, uh, to the Holy Spirit. And uh, it takes a certain amount of time uh, for us to prepare ourselves uh, to engage in organizing, in strategizing, in initiating the plans uh, uh, before we see the the. Uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the birthing of it in reality, okay, which is the Kairos moment. So the Kronos moment is the time when we uh, receive uh, the vision, the time when we are organizing, planning, uh, strategizing, when we are working hard, laboring hard, and uh, uh, when the fullness of time comes, which is the Kairos moment, we will see God's vision. Uh, that has been birthed in us, uh, we see its uh, fulfillment here on earth. So the fullness of time, when the time is ripe, uh, he has to do, you know, God will bring about uh, things, okay? Uh, and uh, he will fulfill it. So there's both uh, the external factors and the internal factors, uh, you know, for the coming of these two things together. There's the Kronos moment and the Kairos uh, moment. So we look at that, you know, uh, in the Kairos moment, uh, there is a Kairos moment for the initiation and for the execution of God-given uh, vision. So uh, for the Kairos moment uh, to come to 
to take uh, the fullness of time to come into uh, action for us to see God's vision birthed in us, uh, there is the external factors and there are the internal factors. So there's external factors that determine the Kairos time and there is the internal factors that also determine the Kairos time. That means, uh, you know, both of these factors, uh, when, you know, when we, uh, when we adhere to it, when we are in sync with it, when we are in alignment with it, then we will see the birthing of uh, uh, God's vision or plan or his dream or what he wants to do in and through our life. So what is the external factor? The external factor is uh, the people, you know, uh, as I already said that, you know, God births his vision to a person, uh, you know, who becomes a vision bearer, who carries a vision, but also that God brings about other people or other individuals uh, who would carry this along with us, uh, would encourage us, help us, uh, you know, do their bit in seeing uh, God's vision being birthed or his plan being executed here on earth. Uh, so we see God bringing the right people. He will, oh, we will also see God bringing the people that are not uh, needed. Um, or sometimes it can also be that, you know, um, the previous generation has done their bit uh, and it's time to make way for the next generation to carry on the plans and purposes of God. So one of the external factors are people. The second one is places. God prepares the place, uh, the city, the region, the environment where uh, the work is going to be birthed. Uh, it's going to be released. He prepares uh, the place. He also prepares um, the things that are surrounding the vision bearer, the man or the woman who's carrying the vision uh, in, in terms of his finances, his family, just uh, preparing that. So these are the external factors that determine the Kairos time, uh, the fullness of time for the birthing of God's vision. Um, and, uh, you know, there's also the internal factors. Uh, the internal factors uh, include, you know, uh, the vision bearer uh, being prepared, uh, being ready uh, to execute uh, the God-given vision or God-given purpose uh, in their life. So it means having the right uh, heart attitudes. The person should have a right heart attitude, right relationship with people, uh, maturity uh, in their walk with God, in their understanding of God's ways, uh, you know, uh, being developed spiritually in several areas of their life, uh, putting their personal life in order, their home, their family, um, you know, possessing a serve heart of a servant, uh, attitude of a servant, not being a boss, not bossing over people that that God brings into uh, their lives to birth their vision, but how they can uh, be examples, how they can have a heart of a servant, serve along with the others, how they can encourage and motivate others uh, and build others up who God assigns uh, to, you know, to fulfill the vision that uh, he's birthing in and through the vision bearer and also a Christ-like. Uh, character okay so um there's nothing that we can do to uh you know speed in the process god takes his time to prepare us if we delay things and we are not learning we're not having the right heart attitudes we are not having a right relationship with people we're not maturing in our spiritual walk with god we don't possess a heart of a servant we are not christ-like in our character then it can delay uh things that God is doing in our um, lives, okay? Um, so uh, we can see that, you know, uh, our life is lived in seasons and stages and in phases. We learn this uh, when we're looking at fulfilling God's purpose for your life in your first year. Um, so we see that, you know, there will be several seasons when we can go through this chronos uh, phases when God is preparing us or when he is uh, building us up or uh, he's preparing us or he's uh, you know times when we are strategizing or uh, we are uh, bringing our uh, contemplating what to do how to go about things so there can be different seasons that we can go through in the in the chronos moments uh, but the kairos moment uh, you know that god takes us through 
uh, uh, you know, uh, will come at the end of the Kronos moment, uh, when he will bring about, uh, you know, what he has envisioned, what he has planned, what he wants to birth in and uh, through us. But we must be like the sons of Issachar who understood the times, um, uh, because uh, First Chronicles chapter 13, verse 32, we read that the sons of Issachar understood the times, uh, they knew what Israel ought to uh, do. So we need to also recognize the times and seasons God is taking us through as he uh, unfolds his kingdom plans, purposes, uh, and his visions and his dreams in and through our lives. Okay. A God-given vision requires uh, preparation. So, you know, God will not just give us uh, the, the vision and then the day, day two, uh, he will just show us what is the strategies. Uh, and day three, he will not just birth it, will not be just a Kairos moment, but he takes us through a preparation time. Uh, you know, the preparation time is times when uh, the internal factors that I just mentioned, uh, you know, that God will help us to grow in it, develop in it, develop Christ-like character, um, you know, and during the preparation time, God will also give us the opportunity uh, to associate with other people who are working or birthing the same kind of vision, how they're going, what they have done, uh, what are the pitfalls to avoid, uh, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. Uh, God will also give us uh, dreams, strategies, plans. He'll He'll uh, associate us with people who can help us uh, birth our vision. Uh, you know, He will also train us, equip us uh, in being efficient in how to, uh, you know, birth His uh, vision and in. Um, in uh, the plans that he has for us. Um, you know, sometimes um, God can also give us a vision, but then he can take us and put us uh, uh, into, you know, to work alongside somebody else's uh, vision that he wants, uh, that he's birthing in and through somebody else. So you can say, God, I thought you wanted me to be a pastor of uh, of a big church, you've given me this vision, this dream, I know for sure. And what am I doing here? You know, I'm here with an, uh, you know, under another pastor, another senior pastor, you know, building his church, doing things in his church, building his ministry, building his vision. Uh, so God, what do you really are saying? What are you doing to my life? So, you know, sometimes God can uh, take us to this preparation time where he is taking us into somebody else's uh, uh, you know, vision where we are helping them. But as we are doing that, God is preparing us. He's teaching us, hey, this is how things need to be done. Even as you are going to go and birth your own church, you're going to be the pastor, senior pastor of a, of a big church. You know, these uh, observe this man of God, observe this senior pastor, how he's doing things, how he is working things, learn from him. Learn how to, uh, you know, church administration, church building, church, um, uh, how do you execute a church, how do you build a church, how do you run a church. So, you know, uh, sometimes we can do things uh, also that, uh, you know, uh, not directly related to the vision that God has put in our hearts. Uh, we are compelled to do things. Uh, sometimes it makes no sense. It does not seem relevant to what we are carrying in our hearts. It can be like a disconnected uh, season. But, you know, uh, just be assured that, you know, while you're doing all of this, God is preparing you. You never know God is preparing you and taking you through all of these things which you think is not relevant. But God knows that, you know, later on you will be using all of this in your uh, own um, uh, ministry okay so he's de developing you in the areas of life that are important uh, to fulfill your vision god will take you through the various seasons of life um, uh, which you know he's designing for you so that he can bring about specific growth in specific uh, areas so preparation time is never wasted time and our focus should be to work with God, uh, be yielded to his working in our lives in each um, season. I'll just give you an example. For example, Pastor Ashish, you know, when he was in his 10th grade, uh, after his 10th grade, he did not want to study further. He just wanted to go ahead and, uh, 
you know, he wanted to full time ministry. He just wanted to go out and share God's word. Uh, but his father said, no, you have to study. And uh, he was not willing. He was uh, uh, he was adamant to go and preach God's word. And so his father took him to two pastors. And uh, both of them, you know, uh, he met them separately. But both of them said, what is the hurry? Even Jesus waited 30 years, you know, before he launched out into ministry. And in three years, God did everything what he wanted to do. So, you know, that made uh, brought sense to his mind and uh, in his heart. And he went and studied. He studied engineering. You know, he, uh, you know, he's, uh, he studied engineering, computers, and, uh, you know, he started his own company. He also studied, uh, you know, uh, engineering in the science field. Uh, so we see that, you know, all of what he had studied, engineering, the computer field, you know, is helping him now uh, as a senior pastor of a church where he is able to, you know, do this e-learning, uh, build up this e-learning platforms for students, online in, online courses, you know, build up the website, uh, do so many things through, uh, uh, you know, through technology to reach out to, uh, to millions of people around uh, the world, yeah. you know, and how does he have all of these ideas and strategies is because he studied computer science, he knows everything, and that makes him so much more, uh, uh, gives him an upper hand and so much more efficient uh, to bring in technology into the kingdom of God and to, um, you know how to uh, release material and uh, uh, to uh, you know, to reach out to thousands and millions of people around the globe. Now, just imagine if he had not studied computer science, he would be so limited in his knowledge, his understanding of what can be done. Uh, but uh, just see, you know, uh, it, you might think that those four years of engineering and what he did, his MS degree, all his, uh, you know might be something that is uh, irrelevant, disconnected seasons where he felt a stirring in his heart to go and preach and teach about God. But we see that, you know, how God was designing every season of his life, uh, uh, you know, and bringing growth in specific areas to build his uh, kingdom. So sometimes we can go to disconnected seasons, but don't be discouraged. God is just basically teaching you, building you up those areas so that you can, when he launches you out to birth your own vision, your plan and purposes, all of these things which you have learned will come, um, uh, you know, with help, would, uh, would be purposeful, will be meaningful. Okay, let's take an example about Joseph. We see that Joseph had a dream very early in his life, uh, God, where God birthed uh, his plan and purpose. But we see that, you know, things in Joseph's life took unexpected turns. He was sold away as a slave by his brothers. He was in a foreign land in Egypt. He was uh, a slave to Potiphar, and then he becomes a manager. And for no fault of his, he was thrown into prison. Uh, but from there, you know, um, uh, you know, he rises up to be the prime minister or the second in command uh, 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 to Pharaoh in Egypt. So we see that uh, even though God birthed his plan and purpose, uh, he received dreams and visions about his future uh, as a young boy, as a very young boy. But it took so many years of his life before he could see uh, you know, God's purpose uh, being uh, uh, fulfilled uh, or the Kairos moment to come into place. And through the Kronos uh, events of his life, the different seasons, he went through different challenges. Uh, he might have wondered, he might have questioned God, he might have doubted, but we see, you know, um, Joseph walked in the fulfillment of his God-given uh, dream. So there was a timeline. Uh, let's look at how, you know, God works through the Kronos moments, how he takes us through the Kronos moments, so different seasons in life, uh, and brings us finally to the Kairos moment. If uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, uh, willing to submit and surrender uh, and work those internal and external factors, uh, how he brings us uh, through the different seasons into the Kairos moment. So let's look at Joseph's life. And now Joseph uh, was 17 years old when he was sold as a slave um, into Egypt. He was 30 years old when he was uh, brought out of prison, uh, which means it took a total of 13 years 
uh, you know, when he was sold uh, uh, as a slave, when he was in prison, he was in Potiphar's house, then in prison, before he was, he became the prime minister of uh, Egypt. So, you know, 11 years in Potiphar's house, two years in prison. So 13 years before he saw, you know, 13 Kairos, uh, sorry, Kronos seasons of life before he could see the uh, Kairos moment. So we see that, you know, after serving faithfully for another nine years, when Joseph was 39 uh, years old, he got to see his brothers when they came first time uh, to, in, to Egypt. And it was uh, 41 years when he saw them uh, the second time uh, with their father, Jacob, uh, when Joseph's uh, dream was fulfilled. So we see that approximately it took 30 years from the time he had the dream to the time that the dream was fulfilled. So 30 years of Kronos seasons, Kronos moments uh, to seeing the fulfillment of, uh, you know, the Kairos moment when his dream was uh, fulfilled. And we see the rest remaining 70 years, you know, uh, what God was doing, uh, what God wanted him to do, uh, you know, he does that for the next 70 years and he dies when he is 110 years old. So for Joseph, uh, you know, uh, you know, it happened when he was 40 years old, but continuing that vision is equally important. So Joseph walked in it for possibly another 70 years uh, time when he fulfilled God-given uh, vision for his um, life. Okay, but we see that it took approximately 30 years from the time he had the dream to the time the dream was uh, fulfilled. Let's look at Moses. You know, uh, you know, Moses was trained in uh, Pharaoh's uh, palace um, where he understood God's calling for his life. Like I uh, mentioned in Acts chapter 7, verse 22. Um, and, uh, you know, those years of his life where uh, the initial training, preparation and positioning him uh, to be the next pharaoh so that he can deliver his people out of Egypt. So at the age of 40, he basically understood in his heart what God has called him to do, what was his purpose that was uh, to try to you know, to uh, to set his people free, but he tried to accomplish it in his own methods and it delayed the process by another 40 years. So he had to spend 40 years in the wilderness, uh, in mid in the uh, in Midian. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, we see that uh, he had to wait, God had to wait till the Pharaoh died. Uh, and then at the age of 80, you know, God calls him uh, when he has that burning bush encounter, uh, again, reminds him of his divine mission. And for the next 40 years of his life, we see uh, Moses goes about fulfilling his plan and purpose for his um, life. But even as he goes about fulfilling God's plan and purpose for his life for the next 40 years, we see that he makes a, a mistake. Uh, you know, a serious mistake where instead of uh, speaking to the rock, he strikes the rock and he was not allowed to enter the promised land, but he was only able to see the promised land from afar. Okay. Uh, David, we know that <clears throat> David was anointed to be um, the king when he was a teenager, maybe at the age of 18. Uh, but the next few years of his life, he's basically a shepherd taking care of the sheep you know, uh, they, uh, protecting his sheep from the lion and bear. And also, you know, uh, he's a skillful musician, so he plays uh, the music for Saul whenever needed. And uh, when he was 15 or 17 years old, uh, he kills Goliath. And then after that, he becomes a hero. But, uh, you know, Saul feels threatened by his uh, presence. So he makes him a commander over a of a thousand um, soldiers. And he puts him in the, sends him to battle thinking that, uh, you know, he will die and he'll be done away with so that his son can become the next king. Uh, but we see that, um, you know, David does not die. God gives him victory. He's seen as a national hero. And, uh, uh, you know, Saul uh, is jealous of him and is, you know, this evil in, uh, desire to kill uh, David. So we see that David is running like a vagabond for the next uh, few years of his life. He's spending his life in the wilderness, in the caves. But during this time, you know, God uh, sends uh, 400 uh, men, later on they become 600 men, 400 to 600 men, uh, you know, who 
become his men very close to him uh, who goes and do great exploits and fight battles and these men become you know uh, when when uh, david becomes king becomes the, his generals his army uh, you know committed men so we see that you know god brings 400 men into his life they come join him they stay with david they fight his battles along with the uh, him and uh, at the age of 23 when Saul dies uh, we see that you know uh, David becomes king but he becomes king only over one tribe that is Judah he rules over them for the next uh, seven years and six months and uh, when David was uh, 30 years old he finally becomes uh, the king over all of Israel and Judah and he reigns over them for the next 40 years so David must have been around 70 to 75 years when he died uh, but we see that it took 17 years of preparation time uh, for Moses, it took 40 years. Uh, for, da for David, it took 17 years of preparation time uh, from the Kronos moment, you know, when they were, when, uh, uh, you know, he was called uh, to the time when uh, he stepped into his uh, calling uh, to be king over Israel at the age of uh, 30, to see the Kairos moment, to see, uh, you know, what God has called him to do, uh, to see that in reality. Okay. We look at two more examples. Uh, the other one is Paul and then is uh, Jeremiah. You know, Paul at the age of 33, he has his encounter with God on the road to Damascus. Um, and we see that, uh, you know, uh, the next 17 years of uh, Paul's life is called the silent years in Paul's life. Uh, we do not know much what he is, what he did, but we know that uh, you know uh, people tried to kill him. In uh, he spent three years in Damascus, people uh, and in Arabia. So spent three years in Damascus and Arabia. Uh, people tried to kill him in Damascus, so he fled to Arabia, and that's where he received much of his uh, revelations, which he. Uh, writes in his episodes, which he preaches about. Uh, and then we see that he spent about 13 years uh, preaching and teaching uh, in the regions of uh, Sicilia, uh, Syria, and Tarsus. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, um, you know, after uh, 17 years, when Paul was almost about 50 years old, that he begins his first missionary um, uh, journey. Okay, so uh, the 17 years of uh, Paul's life from his time of his encounter on the road to Damascus is called as the silent years of Paul's life. Uh, nothing much is recorded other than that he just preached a few places. But, uh, you know, uh, during this time he was basically being trained uh, and he received much of his revelations that which we read about in his um, episodes. Okay. Um, and we see that after 17 years, you know, he uh, steps in um, uh, to do his first missionary journey. Uh, but we see the 17 years are uh, years of preparation and training uh, for Apostle Paul. So what we come to know is God is not in a hurry. You know, he takes 40 years, he takes 17 years. For Jesus, it was 30 years of his life. Uh, but then, you know, uh, the few years that... Uh, God executes uh, the Kairos moments uh, when he brings about births about his plan and purpose in the true lives. He can just do it in a year, in, a two, in two years, in three years. Uh, God can do it. He's not, uh, you know, he's, he lives about time and space. The last example is Jeremiah. Jeremiah was, um, you know, given a prophetic call even before he was born, um, you know, and God told him not to allow people to tell him that he was too young when he starts out his ministry but it took at least 16 years from the time that uh, he had his first visitation from god to you know uh, chapter one uh, where he releases his first prophetic utterances where he receives from god so 16 years of chronos moments seasons to uh, to the kairos moment it took uh, 16 years of uh, his time so we see that you know um uh, every God-given vision that God has appointed uh, has an appointed uh, time for its initiation, execution, and for his fulfillment. And before the fulfillment, God takes us through the preparation uh, uh, time, okay? Um, and during the preparation time, you know, um, um, 
you know, is a waiting time when we're waiting to see what God is birthing in and to us. It does not mean that we are going to be idle, but uh, during that preparation time, you know, God is actually involved uh, with what God has assigned us to do. Uh, during this waiting period, we see that Joseph served uh, with excellence in Potiphar's house and later in prison. During the waiting period, we see Moses got married, he had children, he took care of his father-in-law's sheep. Uh, during the waiting period, we see that David took care of his father's um, uh, sheep. He fought the lion and the bear. Uh, you know, he became a skillful musician. He he sang songs to God. He had a deep, intimate relationship with God, uh, which built him up uh, to engage in the battles in the future and to trust and wait and depend on uh, God for his uh, victories. And during his waiting period, we see that Paul received abundance of revelations, which he eventually preached and taught and uh, wrote about. So each season is really a preparation for the next season of life, uh, each phase that God takes us or each season of preparation that he takes us uh, is to prepare us for the next step of the journey, to prepare us for the next phase, for the things that are coming up in the future. Uh, so we must uh, endure, we must persevere, we must be in a state of constant learning, growing and maturing uh, with God. Okay. And the unfolding of a God-given vision may differ from our expectation. Um, you know, sometimes we misunderstand how God is going to go about fulfilling his vision that he's given to us. Uh, like we saw uh, in the example of Mary, it was through a vision. Uh, God spoke to Joseph in a dream. And then, you know, they had to go to Bethlehem where they could not find a suitable inn. It was in a stable um, uh, but we see that, uh, you know, uh, we must, uh, we think God will work in a certain way, but we must be open to whatever, you know, or whichever way God, whichever way God causes his dreams to become a reality. Uh, for example, Joseph would never have thought that he would be sold off as a slave, uh, and, you know, end up to be a prisoner. Uh, Moses would never have thought that he had to run away from palace, from his own people, uh, you know, from being the next pharaoh of Egypt uh, to living in the wilderness for the next 40 years of his life. David, who was anointed as king, never thought he would have to run like a vagabond, you know, from place to place, uh, hiding in caves in the wilderness, uh, even though he was anointed by prophet Samuel to become the next king of uh, Israel. So when God imparts dreams um, and gives us our divine destinies, our uh, births his vision to us uh, and the spirit you know reveals it to us um, you know uh, the journey towards uh, that fulfillment of these dreams and visions can be difficult uh, you know uh, it can be longer than expected uh, we would not envision those these things can happen but you know we need to hold on we need to endure we need to uh, persevere OK, uh, because when we persevere, when we stay on course, you know, God will reveal uh, his glory in and through us uh, who people consider as uh, foolish, weak, uh, you know, as unknown, as despised and as uh, nothing. Who would know that a slave would become the next prime minister of Egypt? Who would know that a man who was persecuting Christians would himself uh, become a man who was preaching and teaching and uh, and, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, raising up churches and being an apostle who would know that, um, you know, a man who killed somebody would actually be the deliverer of people and set people free out of a uh, nation. So, you know, um, uh, God chooses people who the world considers as foolish, weak, unknown and despised and nothing, but God works in and uh, through them. Uh, we also see from these examples in Moses's life that, you know, that the Kairos moment for God-given vision can get delayed when we try to do things in our, uh, in our own flesh. Uh, you know, the flesh can all, always come and stand and be a hindrance from birthing God's uh, vision, which is given to us or uh, which is revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. So we need to be very careful of that. You know, sometimes... Uh, we can't just sit back and say it is the 
the enemy or it's God's preparing me. But sometimes it can be our own foolishness. It can be our own flesh that comes in a way and delays the Kairos uh, moment like uh, we, see, we see in the life of um, Moses. But in spite of the mistakes that we make, you know, God can cause uh, the delays and the disappointments, the discouragements. Uh, he can, you know, when we turn around, when we ask for forgiveness and we realign our wills to God's will, God's will, you know, God is greater than our mistakes. Um, no situation is too complex that he can't resolve. You know, God can work uh, things on our uh, behalf, like, uh, you know, uh, we will see in um, the next class, we will look at a few passages where we see how God can restore us uh, from our fallen nature, from uh, the mistakes that we have made to how he can uh, restore us uh, to continue birthing his plan and his vision for our lives. Okay, we'll stop here. We'll continue in our, in our next class. Anyone has any uh, questions? Any questions? Anything that you want to clarify? Anything that you want to ask? Okay, if no questions, we'll end class. Um, uh, tomorrow is your uh, second assessment. I will post it by uh, 5 p.m. Uh, uh, IST and uh, you can submit it on um, uh, Friday for some of you can be Saturday evening at 5 p.m. IST. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day and a good week ahead. Uh, God bless you.